how to enter a contest. Excuse me, I've got bits of aluminium. I'm right in the thick of uh, drilling out some components in the workshop. How to enter a contest. Many of you saw me on the IOTA contest. All right, so I sat here for 20 hours out of 24 and uh, I did a, a blooming good score, actually, and I won my category. But if you don't like contests, that's fine. I'm going to say something at the end of this regarding people who don't like contests or people who do like contests. So you hear of a contest on the go right now or you know there's a contest coming up. Can you enter it? Anybody can enter a contest, even if they don't supply a log. Right, although it's a very good idea for the log organ for the contest organizers for you to supply something called a check log. That's just saying I made 12 contacts, I have my log just to put into the big machine in the sky, and that'll tell you, you know, if the people I spoke to actually spoke to me. And, uh, and it clears up sometimes the odd anomaly. I use N1MM as a contest logger, and I did a video about installing N1MM and I'll put a link in that description. So assume you've downloaded N1MM, but now you know where the hell, where, where you need to start. You need to start at a, a contest calendar. So there's the one I like to use is this one here. It's called contestcalendar.com, all right? And it comes up with an eight day window and I'm scrolling down because this Saturday, as you can see these blue bars here, we've got CQ Worldwide DX contest, which is kind of, one half of the world championships in a funny sort of way and we always have a set of rules and that will tell you everything you need to know about the contest in particular what the contest exchange is so in uh, cq worldwide you're giving a signal report and the reason why everybody gives 59 is because if everybody give 57 56 4 and 2 5 and 7 is there's something else to go wrong so they just say 5 and 9 right Context exchange plus it wants to know the CQ zone. So you can just look that up, CQ zones. People sell maps and all sorts of things, but fundamentally there is a CQ zone. And I'm looking at, I'm in 14 here. All right. I think this is a map you can buy, but I'm in 14. All right. So I'll be 5914. There we are. That's my exchange. Then normally we've got a bunch of rules. Okay. The first one being what category, if you've got an amplifier, you haven't got an amplifier, if you want to use the cluster, if you don't want to use the cluster, this normally caters for everybody. So the first one out of the box is a single operator category, single operator, and the QSO finding of assistance of any kind is prohibited. So no cluster, nothing. Or you can use the assisted, right? Which means you see, sometimes you want the toys, you want the cluster, things like that. Fine. Then we've got high power or low power or QRP, not exceeding five watts, not 10 watts, five watts. Okay, so in an essence, that's it. I will show you N1M in a minute and how I use that. Then we've got an overlay. So if you only did 24 of the 48 hours, then you can enter the classic category. It's an overlay. It's like I've entered TQ Worldwide, single operator, low power, whatever else, with a classic overlay. So I only did 24 of the 48. Fine. Right, now I'm going to fire up N1MM. Now, my version of N1M is exactly the same as yours. It's probably going to say there's a new version. I have a lot of other stuff on the screen, and you can shut everything down apart from this window at the bottom. And if you ever get stuck, um, window, and you've got all sorts of things, so I can switch the grey line off, or window, I can switch the grey line on. And everything's resizable and all that sort of stuff. A lot of fun you can have there. When you first start N1MM, it will come up with a little wizard. Don't worry if you cock the wizard up. You can fix everything normally with config, configure ports mode, or change your station data. Change your station data is this bit here, and the wizard, I'll bring it over here so we can have a look. The wizard wants to know my name, locator, CQ zone, ITU zone, all that sort of stuff. If I'm outside of the US, I put DX in here. That's all. Then the next thing you just need to know, if you've already got FT8 running or any sort of comp port already connected to your radio, go and have a look at how that is connected. Come over to N1MM. I'll move that out of the way. And I'm COM1 TS990. And I've got these various ports set up. And that's exactly the same as FT8. Why do I need that? Really, the only reason is, is when I twiddle my 
control knobs here, the band map will move and also it will know what frequency I'm on. So as you, you can see the frequency I'm on here over here, look, 717107. And when I hit the enter button, it logs it on the right frequency as well. Right, how do we get to CQ Worldwide? I use the DX part of this. So file, I want a new log in the database. So you keep my saying database, mine's called Holly Farm, all right? New log, and it comes up, move this over here, comes up with a bit of a wizard. So, so I'm DX, do you see it right at the top there? There's a DX, DX is just general logging. So you can use that for general logging. CQ Worldwide, it's in alphabetical order. So I'm scrolling up CQ WPX, CQ Worldwide SSB. There we are. It doesn't know the start date, or does it? 25th, oh, it does know the start date. Uh, right, so I'm, I'm gonna be, let's say if I was entering it myself, I'll be a single op or band. I might be low power SSB or whatever else. It's SSB contest. There's the overlay, you can have classic. I'm a fixed station. Oh, I'm going to use non-assist. Whoops, non-assisted, for instance. One transmitter. My scent exchange is one four. I hit OK. I'm ready now to put MM0RMY. Tom calls me and he's in the book. That's my first contact. So it was green because it's a new country, new everything. Right. Gradually, it will find it another mm0 abc is blue because we already had the multiplier multipliers are like you multiply zones by countries by whatever the rules are okay so i'm going to delete tom from here by right clicking and i just worked out n1m myself and you can do the same it's just good fun you know so that's how that's you now set up for cq worldwide if you want to go back to your other one open a log and at the bottom of here, DX General, is this the one I use? We'll soon find out. Yes, that was the last call I made, GB, G8MNY. Well, I was testing out my four square, actually. So why do you enter a contest? Well, one, you might as well join in the melee because the two very big contests every year, it's all the bands are rammed. You've got 17, 12. 60 and 30 to play with, but you will find every band is rammed, okay? For two weekends a year. Uh, so you might as well join in. But what I found is that when I started doing contesting, my accuracy improved, my style improved, my ability to either run a pileup or join in a pileup or beat a pileup or whatever else uh, got better. You become better at propagation. I hear a very long distance station, but he's extremely quiet. I know, just wait an hour and he'll be a bit louder and then he'll probably hear me. So if you're interested in any sort of emergency communications or anything like that, entering contests improves your ability to get through pieces of information fast with heavy QRM and that sort of thing. That's what I think. It happens to test your equipment to the maximum because you're flat out for let's say 48 hours and the multi multi teams and the multi two teams and i'm building a multi two station here some of you know um stretches all that to the to the maximum okay you need i need one fader in the whole chain of everything uh, and everything stops oh, i find that quite interesting installing n1mm is a breeze go and watch that video i think it's quite short this one is supposed to be short as well, but anybody can enter a contest. Anybody can play in the contest. Nobody is stopping you. Now, if Poland are calling the whole of the world and you call a man in Spain who's calling Poland, he's not going to want to know. That's why you just look at the rules so you don't annoy anybody because he might say to you, well, you're five or nine, but I can't give you a number because I, I'm only after the Polish guys or I'm only after the Spanish guys or whatever. I think the King of Spain contest I think that's only Spanish stations. It doesn't matter. It might not be. You don't need to correct me. But you just look at the rules. It says, oh, right, fine. That's what I can do. Contact anybody, you know. Unless you've got two contests on the same day. So SSB Field Day, beginning of September, and All Asia Contest are at the same time. So All Asia Contest, once a year, 
at once your age, right? So if there's three or four of you playing, you agree in age, you know, 14. <laughs> um, at the same time, the field day contest wants a serial number. So you can hit a an all Asia. He'll give you a, an age. You can give him an age and just enter it, just what his age is. And that's fine. So you can enter, effectively, two contests at the same time. There we are. Easy, isn't it? When you know how. Enjoy your radio. I'll see you in the contest. CQ Worldwide this coming weekend because I'm recording this on the 20th of October 2025. May the force be with you and enjoy your radio. <laughs> <laughs>